It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about a really nice little monitoring system for basically checking your uptime and a few other little stats and it's called Uptime Kuma. It's pretty new but there's several videos out there on it already. I've seen quite a few of them out there on the internet but I've been using Chow for a while and it's pretty good. It sends me notifications through email when things go down or when statuses change which is which is great. Um, but it hasn't been maintained in a few years, so running it just becomes more and more of a risk, basically. Um, it is open source, so the nice thing is if I really wanted to, I could pull down the code, I could try to figure it out, I could start running it. But um, it's really built in a code base I'm not familiar with. It's, it's Ruby on Rails with gems and things like that. It's, it's basically JavaScript, but some specialized stuff in there, right? So... Um, not that Uptime Kuma is any different, I don't know, I haven't looked yet to see what it's built on, but it is a newer application, it's got current development, which is really great, it's got quite a bit of people going after it and using it, and it's got a nice UI, so I thought I'd show it today, and it does have notifications that you can set up. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post... All of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion, and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that. But if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting a notification through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you, jump over and become a supporter on Patreon, patreon.com. I've got the links in the description and the show notes. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. So if we just take a look here, this is a basic idea of what one of the screens looks like, and I'll show you what, what, one of my, what mine setup looks like here. Um, before we even go do the install. So I set up a few different things and you see here when I first come in I get some quick stats because I haven't selected anything over here yet. But I can select something to kind of show you. So here's my show notes. It's the one that I've been running the longest. So the first time uh, on the ping was a little bit longer than the rest. But you can see here's a pretty nice graph and as this one rolls off these will start to get a little bit better. Um, we can go look at this one as well. And you can see this is my lug discourse site. Um, my lug Jitsi site, so the Jitsi meet that I've got running there. Here's my analytics site, so you can see kind of how the ping times change a little bit there, but that one's running here on my internal network. So these are kind of all over the place, and I host them in different places, but just kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. I'm sorry, this is solid invoice, not show notes. Um, here's my show notes, so you can see show notes also kind of just different various times, but it shows you a little bit of information about what's going on, and it gives you this nice little kind of graph and as things change, you'll see that the, the coloring changes. You'll see red if things are down. And then you get this nice little uptime, whether it's up or down, and so on. And it gives you a little bit of statistics. And then down here, if anything changes, it'll give you a little bit of history. Now, I haven't been running this long enough for anything to really change. But over time, it can. And there's a lot of settings inside of it as well that we can go through. So first, let's just click on the settings. And we'll kind of check those out. So first, you've got uh, theming and you can change a little bit of information here. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger so you guys can see these options a little better if you're on your phone, and then we'll go back, okay? Um, so first thing, uh, language, I'm gonna set it to English, but if you speak a different language or need different language settings, there's a lot of languages in here that you can kind of go check and, and choose from, so be aware of that. You do have light theme, sorry about that if I'm blinding you, dark theme, which you can just set all the time, and then auto, which will go with the theme of whatever your operating system is. In my case, I'm using dark theme on Pop! OS. Uh, you've got the theme uh, header, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, the theme for the heartbeat bar, so you've got normal. You've got it underneath, so basically out to the side or underneath, and then you can say none, I don't want the heartbeat bar. So I like normal, I think it's fine just like that, but if you want to put it underneath the bottom, have it a little longer, you can. I'm just going to leave it as normal. As we go down, we get some general information. So you can set your time zone. I did not set this inside of the uh, Docker run command, so it just automatically picked up on it. I don't know if it was just set that way, but if you need to change it, you can change it right here. Your search and invisibility, so basically allow uh, indexing. So I have discouraged the indexing set, and it was set by like that automatically. I just left it set. And then what do you want for your entry page? Do you want the dashboard or do you want the status page? And finally, the base URL. Now, if you're going to run this uh, inside of an, a reverse proxy, you might want to use the actual URL that you're going to use, the domain name you're going to use for it. But in my case, I'm just going to run this here on my local network. I don't need to have it reverse proxied for any reason. So this is fine. And you can just click this button and it detected the IP address and the port automatically for me. So that was great. If you're going to have this trying to detect a game server that you're running and you're using Steam in the, in the back end, you can set up a Steam API key. I don't have any of that, so I didn't set that up. 
And then you can have a monitor history basically, and this is how many days. So it's got 30 days, that's fine. You can set this longer, shorter, whatever you want. Just don't forget to save your changes after you do that. You can change your password. So when you first set it up, you'll see that we create a login and a password. But if you need to change your password, you can do that. You can put in your current password and then new password and repeat. And again, update that. You can set up two-factor authentication as well. You can export a backup of your settings and then you can import a backup if you need to. So you can set the system up new and import a, a saved backup in order to put it back the way it was. And of course, you've got some advanced stuff here. We can say disable auth authentication log out or clear all statistics so if you want to get rid of all the statistics you've saved so far you can do that right here if we go back up there's another column over here for notification setup now i haven't set anything up yet but if i click on that you'll see that you've got telegram you've got webhooks email through smtp which is probably the one that i would do but i might do telegram as well if you're a discord user you can jump on and do discord microsoft teams users can use teams signal uh let's see gotify slack rocket chat Pushover. I didn't know there were so many different push services out there. So anyways, we can go all the way down and you can see a lot of these. Now, I was interested in Push Bullet when I first started this up, but then Push Bullet stopped uh, supporting iOS uh, a year, a year and a half ago. Um, they just didn't want to set up the Apple login stuff that Apple's going to require at some point. So I was kind of sad to see that go because Push Bullet was a really great app. But um, anyways, if I was going to do one, I'd probably do Telegram, maybe Discord. I might try to set up Rocket Chat, but I'd have to kind of check out what it needs. But you've got a lot of options here. So if you want to get notifications, you can set that up for sure. i um, not going to do that right now, but you can see what's required here for any kind of setup like that. So we can just hit cancel. Um, I think I'll close right here. But you can test your setup when you get ready, those kind of things as well. And then if you want to see information about the system, you've got it right here. So we'll go back to the dashboard and you'll see this is kind of what it looks like anytime you do this. Now it's zoomed in a little bit, so it's not going to look great, but I'm going to go over here to the status area and you'll see here that I've got it kind of set up with groups and basically you can go in and once you set these sites up over on the dashboard side, you can come in here and set up group names and then you can put different sites under those groups. So it makes it a little bit easier to look at and you can again see some real quick stats on what things look like. I think that's pretty awesome, uh, pretty nice, simple setup, and then you can always jump back to your dashboard when you're ready to see what's going on. You can get a little bit more detail. So if we click here um, on my solid invoice or on my show notes, we can see some detail about ping times and things like that. Um, we can, of course, zoom back out so it's a little bit easier to see, and then we can see any history down here at the bottom. And you've got some pretty cool information. Now here you can edit it, you can pause it from checking, and then of course you could delete it if you don't want to check that site anymore. So pretty, pretty simple, pretty clean interface for Uptime Kuma. That's really the overall basics of the interface. Uh, I'd like to go set it up, and then we can try to set some of these up on the new one that we set up as well. So I'm going to jump back over to Uptime Kuma here on the GitHub page. And you have a live demo. If you want to test it out over on their site, you can. Then they've got a list of features. And now they've got the Docker install, which is what I'm going to do because Docker just makes things so much easier. But if you don't want to use Docker and you want to do it this way, you absolutely can. So they've got without Docker right after it. They've got administration information. They've got how to update, what's next, so kind of what their roadmap looks like. More screenshots if you just want to see more screenshots. And you can kind of scroll through those things. Then they've got the motivation. Uh, you can go to discussion if you want to go discuss things. They've got a subreddit, which is great. And then you can contribute as well, which is always pretty awesome. So uh, a lot of information there, but we're going to go back up to the Docker information here. So I'm just going to get onto my server. All right, so we're logged into the server, and I am going to go here, and I'm going to CD into my Docker folder. So I talked about having Docker organized and keeping everything nice and organized previously. If you haven't done this already, you should go back and watch that video. Make sure you're keeping all of your self-hosted stuff very organized because it makes it really easy to bring things back up when you need to, and it makes it really easy to save backups of it as well. Um, I see a lot of questions where people are asking, how do I back up my Docker setups? Um, and I'm going to show you kind of what I do right here. So I'm going to say make a directory called Uptime Kuma. Very easy to find. I'm going to CD into that directory. So I've got it Docker Uptime Kuma. So inside of my Docker folder, I've got all of my Docker stuff that I'm doing. And then here I'm going to say nano, which is just a text editor, docker-run.txt. So I'm just going to go back to the browser here. First, I'm going to grab the docker run command right here. 
I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in right here and I'm going to go back. I'm just going to take this out because I don't need the colon one. It just says that that's going to pull version one basically. Um, I want it to pull whatever the latest is honestly. So, um, so here we can kind of go check out what we've got. So here it says uptime Kuma for our data volume mapping. I want to put this in slash home and that's my, my user uh, docker and then slash uptime Kuma. And then I'm going to put this in slash data so that it matches what's over there. And then I don't want to use 3001. So I'm going to use the same port on this machine as I did on the other one, 8299. Feel free to use whatever port you want on this left side. As long as that's an open port on your host, you can do this, okay? You don't have to use 3001, but do not change it on the right side. This is what the application inside of Docker expects. And if you change this, you need to be a developer that knows what you're doing or you're going to mess stuff up. It's got restart set to always, which is great. And then we've got run it as a daemon, which is what we want. So I'm just going to save this. And then I'm going to exit. So I've got my Docker run command right there. Now we've got to do one other step before we actually run the Docker command. And we're going to create this volume that it says. So it says run this little command right here. So we're just going to copy that. We're going to go back in. We're just going to paste that in. Docker volume create uptime kuma. Real simple. Done. Now if we do an ls, we see we just have the docker run.txt. So we're going to say cat docker run.txt and we'll get our whole command that we just created and saved. That's why we do it, so that we've got it right there. We can grab it anytime we want to and we can run it again. When we back up this docker folder, we get that command. We don't have to go find it again. We've got it right there for what we did and we can get it set back up. So I'm just going to highlight that and paste it in right here. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to let it go out and grab that and pull it down. All right, it finished running the command pretty quickly. That's real, real nice. Now, if you're running Portainer, you can just go look at Portainer and look at the logs. But if you're not running Portainer already, which is a nice web user interface for doing things in Docker, if you're using the CLI, that's fine. You can look at the logs anytime just by doing docker logs F. And then we can do uptime Kuma. And it'll just show us kind of like what's going on as far as that goes. So you can see it did some SQL stuff here and it's got everything patched successfully. It says the JWT secret was not found, it's generating one. And so you kind of see some information here. It says it's listening on 3001. Now this is inside the container. It should be listening on the on the host port we mapped, which is 8299. So we can just hit control C to get out of that right there. And we will go back to the browser and we're just gonna open up a new tab and we'll go to that machine and 8299 and there it is so the first time up it asks you what language mine is english in this case but if you like a different language or prefer a different one feel free to choose a different one there i'm going to create a user and then i'm going to create a password real quick that's a strong password here and we're going to hit create and there we go now off the bat it's going to tell you hey there's nothing here so we haven't set anything up yet but again, we've got settings that we can go through and kind of do some, some cleanup on if we need to real quick. Um, so again, it detected my time zone or else this is just preset. I don't know which, but if you need to change your time zone, go change your time zone. We'll continue down. I'm just going to leave everything like I had it while ago. And here, I'm going to zoom this up a little bit. So you see it wants my URL. I'm just going to hit this detect button and it detects the correct uh, host and the correct port number, which is great. Um, again, the API key for Steam, if you have one. Right here, it sets it to 180 days. I don't need it to be that long. I'm going to set it for 30 days again. That's fine. I'm going to hit Save, and it'll tell you when it saves uh, successfully, which is great. We can change our password if we need to. I don't need to. We can update that right there. We can set up two-factor if we want to. I'm not going to right now, but if you're going to have this exposed out to the Internet through a reverse proxy, please set up two-factor authentication for yourself. It will save you and just nights of, of endless worry about accidentally letting somebody into your systems. So uh, again, export backup, import backup, don't need to do any of that stuff. And then notifications right there are, are set. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what the SMTP form looks like here. So you give it a name, give it the host name for your SMTP server, the port number, and then the, again, server information, whether it's TLS, all that kind of stuff, security information here the username and the password. And then you can kind of set up what you want. So from email to email, you know, CC, BCC, subject, and really you can kind of set things. So it gives you a nice simple message 
and, and you've got email coming in. So I'm not going to set that up right now, but I want you to see that form. So make sure you know this information if you want to set up email through SMTP. But right now we'll add a site. So we're going to go here and it's going to be an HTTPS site. And we'll just add the same one that we the, that I added earlier. So I'm going to call this show notes. And that's going to be HTTPS show notes dot open source is awesome dot com. And um, 60 seconds is a, is a little bit often for me. So I'm going to do 300. That's about five minutes. That's just kind of something I prefer. Uh, feel free to set it whatever you want. Just realize that if you set it too quick, too often, and you're having issues reaching the site, it could create problems as well. Um, how many times should it retry? I just like to set two, and I'll just leave it at 300 seconds for the retries as well. There is some advanced stuff, so you can say ignore if you have TLS or SSL errors. So if you have like a, um, a certificate that's not a CA certificate, you could click this button. If you say, if it gets a 200 uh, back, that should be a bad thing in, in this case. And you can tell it, you know, do it an upside down, which basically means if you get a good thing back, it's bad for this particular site. And there are sites that are like that. So just be aware that setting is there. Um, again, max, max retries or redirects is 10. And then here's the uh, types of returns that you expect to get that are good. So you can put in more. If you're expecting to get a 504 error back, then put it in here. If you're expecting to get a 425 error back, I don't know, put it in here. Make sure you put in the ones you expect to get back that's a good thing so it'll know when it gets that it's 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 up and running like you expect. Um, so there we go. That's really it. You can put tags if you want to, but we're just going to hit save and it's going to go out and check it and there you go. It sees and it says, hey, it's up. It checked it already and you're going to get your first ping time and everything like that. So we're going to go back up here. I'm going to add one more and it's another HTTPS site, and we're going to call this um, OSIA Discussion. And that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. Again, about 300 seconds is fine. Two retries, 300 seconds is fine. In fact, you can set this differently. Um, you don't have to check it every 300. You can check it as often or as infrequently as you want. So 10 minutes, if you want, just do 600 seconds. Um, in fact, we can set this as like 1,200 for the retries. So um, max redirects again, 10. That's the, that's the things I expect to get back. I'm going to hit save. So it's going to go out. It's going to check it, and it's going to say, hey, it's up. So we're up and running. So there we go. And now we've got everything here. So. Slowly but slowly, you add sites that you want to keep track of and you want to see if they're up. And then again, if you want to get notified when one goes down, you can set up those notifications so that you make sure that you get notified whenever something goes down. So I'm going to go over here now to the status page and you'll see that it's initially empty. Um, you might want to set the colors if you can. So again, we can switch to dark theme, but you notice I had to hit edit in order to do that. So I'm going to hit dark theme for you guys so that you're not blinded if you're watching this at night. But right here, I'm going to add a group and I'm just going to call this OS. Let's see. So I, I add it. I'm going to double click it. OSIA and then just click off of it. And then we're going to put show notes under it and we're going to put discussion under it. So you do the same thing to add another group later. You click add group, change the name of it, add the sites that aren't already on here. If they go into the wrong one, you can just drag them down to the right section so you can move things around with, with uh, drag and drop. Once you're done adding things, just hit save. And there we go. We get a nice little overview of what's going on and it's categorized and real simple to look at. We can go back to our dashboard when we're ready and we can kind of check things out here. So really, really simple to use, really straightforward. And again, it has notifications, everything built into it. That's Uptime Kuma. There's really not much to it. It's just a nice way to keep track of the uptime and whether things are running the way that you expect as far as your home lab or your home servers or things exposed to the internet. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.